This is a Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Paper 6 alternative to practical talk through from June 22. Number one, the apparatus in the diagram was used to show that when a candle is burned, both water and CO2 are formed. The gases produced when the candle burns are passed through the apparatus using a suction pump. Name the items of apparatus labelled W and X. So although it's a bit weird because it's upside down, hopefully you can see that that's a filter funnel. And then X, I'm inclined to think it's a boiling tube because it's a bit wider than a test tube, but either is fine to get the mark here. Suggest why ice is placed around the U tube. Right, it's told us here the liquid water is made. So the purpose of the ice, because if you think about it, that water is given off as steam from the candle and then we need it to turn back into a liquid, so it effectively needs to condense, and we can encourage that condensation by adding ice because that will cool the water down. So ice causes the water to condense. Describe how to test the liquid collected in the YouTube to show it is water. Wants a physical test here, so you can check like the freezing point or the boiling point. So check the boiling point and make sure you say what that number should be. If it's 100 degrees, it will be water. Solution Z is used to show that carbon dioxide is produced. Identify solution Z. So remember the test for carbon dioxide is to bubble the gas through lime water and that lime water should turn milky in the presence of CO2. You could have also said calcium hydroxide solution, which is the same as lime water. Both water and CO2 were made. Identify one element that must be in the compound that makes up the candle. So water, carbon dioxide. So either pick carbon or hydrogen, because remember, it's that hydrocarbon, which is actually your fuel being burnt here. Describe how the apparatus could be changed to see if sulfur dioxide is made. Give the observations if sulfur dioxide is made. So again, what is the reagent used to test for sulfur dioxide, well, it is potassium manganate 7. And learn the colour change. The colour change is from purple to colourless. The student investigated the rate at which hydrogen gas is made when magnesium reacts with two different solutions of dilute hydrochloric acid, C and D, with different concentrations. So that's our independent variable. The dilute hydrochloric acid was in excess in both experiments. Two experiments were done using the apparatus shown. So we have our dilute hydrochloric acid. And then as, those, as the hydrogen gas is released, it's going to pass along the delivery tube. Experiment 1. A measuring cylinder was used to pour 50 centimetres cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid C into a conical flask. The initial temperature was measured. The apparatus was set up as shown in the diagram. The bung was removed from the conical flask and a coiled 5 centimetre length of magnesium ribbon was added. Then the bung was replaced immediately. So that magnesium ribbon goes here. The volume of gas collected in the inverted measuring cylinder was recorded every 20 seconds for 160 seconds and then the final temperature was measured. Use the thermometer diagrams and the diagrams of the measuring cylinders to complete the tables. You must practice this. These questions come up so often, so read that really carefully. The answer here is 25.0. And then on that second thermometer, we have 34.0. What about the volume of gas collected in the inverted measuring cylinder? Be careful, look at the way that they've written that. Just turn your paper upside down if you're not happy with how they've drawn that. That first measuring cylinder is 27. Then we have 48, 65, 78, 86, 89, 90 and 90 again. Experiment two, experiment one was repeated using 50 centimetres cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid D instead of dilute hydrochloric acid C. And again, we're completing our thermometer and measuring cylinder readings. So this one over here is 25.5 degrees Celsius. 
The one on the right is 31.0 degrees. And now the volume of gas collected. This is 12, 23, 33, 42, 50, 57, 62, and 65. Complete a suitable scale on the y-axis and plot your results from experiments one and two on the grid. Draw two smooth line graphs. The lines must pass through zero, zero. Clearly label your lines. So just make sure you do all of these things they've asked of you and then tick them off to prove it. So we've got our volume of gas collected centimetres cubed on our y-axis. Time is in seconds. So let's pick a sensible scale for the y-axis. So we go from 12 here up to 90. So I'm going to go up in tens. Okay, let's accurately plot these. So we have a time of 20 seconds and 27, 40, 48, 60, 65, 80, 78. And then I'll just complete the rest. Then it's asked for a smooth line. I really struggle to do this on the iPad, but something like that, it's a smooth line of best fit. Please try and draw yours a bit more accurately. Now I'm gonna go for the second one. So we start at time 20 and volume of gas 12. And carry on. And then make sure you identify each line so we have hydrochloric acid D for experiment two. So that's HClD and this was HClC. Double check, have you completed your suitable scale on the y-axis? Yes. Have I plotted my results for experiments one and two? Yes. Have I drawn two smooth line graphs? Have they passed through zero? Yes. Have I labeled my lines? Yes. From your graph, deduce the volume of gas that was collected after 50 seconds in experiment two. So draw a line from 50 seconds and then just read off your y-axis, that's 29. Remember your units, it's 29 centimetres cubed. Explain what can be deduced about the concentrations of dilute hydrochloric acid C and dilute hydrochloric acid D. Well, we can see because of this steeper gradient for hydrochloric acid C that it must have been a higher concentration compared with D because the reaction is clearly much faster. State what happens to the temperature of the dilute hydrochloric acid during experiment one. So experiment one, remember, is this one up here. We can see that the temperature increases State what effect this temperature change has on the total volume of gas made when the reaction is finished. Actually has no effect. So the reason why it has no effect is because you haven't actually altered the number of reactant particles. So all that increase in the temperature does is increase the frequency of successful collisions per unit time. Describe a change that can be made to the apparatus or reagents to reduce the temperature change of the acid. In experiment one, you could use a water bath in order to control that temperature. Suggest why it's important to replace the bung in the conical flask immediately after adding the magnesium ribbon. While the magnesium reacts with the hydrochloric acid, producing hydrogen gas immediately, so we want to replace the bung to minimize loss of gas. State the advantage of measuring the volume of gas collected every 10 seconds rather than every 20 seconds. Basically, it means you have more data. So your graph line is smoother.
solid E and solution F were analyzed, solid E was ammonium sulfate. So that means it contains NH4 plus ions and SO4 two minus ions. Tests were done on each substance. Tests on solid E. Complete the expected observations. Solid E was dissolved in water to form solution E. Solution E was divided into three approximately equal portions in one boiling tube and two test tubes. Aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to the first portion of solution E. The mixture form was warmed, any gas produced was tested. Okay, so when you add sodium hydroxide to ammonium compound, you're going to produce ammonia. So that's NH3. And what observations will you see? Well, if you were to hold that choking gas over damp red litmus paper, it should turn blue. To the second portion of solution E, about one centimetre depth of dilute nitric acid was followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate. So remember, nitric acid and silver nitrate is used to test for the halide ions, group 7, which we don't have here. So observations mean you wouldn't see anything, so there'd be no change. To the third portion of solution E, about one centimetre's depth of dilute nitric acid was followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate. What observations will you see this time? So hopefully you know that the combination of nitric acid and barium nitrate is used to test for sulfate ions, which is good because that's actually what we have. So what's the positive result? Well, you'd see a white precipitate of barium sulfate. Tests on solution F. Solution F was divided into two equal portions and two test tubes. A strip of universal indicator paper was placed in the first portion of solution F the universal indicator paper turned orange. That means you have something which is acidic, so it contains H plus ions. The second portion of, of solution F was added to solid sodium carbonate in a boiling tube. Any gas made was tested. And what do we see happen? Well, we have effervescence in the solid disappeared lime water turned milky, so that means we have CO2, which would come from the carbonate, deduce the pH of solution F, well, because that universal indicator paper turned orange, notice it turned orange as opposed to red, so don't go crazy with your low pH. Let's pick a pH of around 3. Identify the positive ion present. I've already done that. It's H plus ions. A sample of muddy river water contains water, dissolved solids, insoluble solid mud. Plan an investigation to find the concentration of dissolved solids in grams per decimeters cubed in the river water, you're provided with a small sample of less than one decimeters cubed and common laboratory apparatus. Remember that one decimeters cubed is the equivalent of 1,000 centimeters cubed. So that's worth six marks. Because we're interested in looking at the concentration of dissolved solids, we need to get rid of this insoluble solid mud. So first of all, we want to filter the muddy water using... a funnel and filter paper. Then we want to dissolve the soluble solids, pick a quantity of water, let's say 100 centimeters cubed of water, and place in an evaporating basin. Heat to evaporate some of the water. And weigh. Reheat. And weigh until there's no further change in mass. Find the final mass. And now we're getting ready to find the concentration. So we've been told that the concentration is in grams per decimeters cubed. So we do this. We do the equation. Concentration is mass 
divided by volume, and remember that volume needs dividing by a thousand in order to go from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed.